my sensors indicate a new episode of Dave's Vintage Apple Tech has just been uploaded. Hi, this is Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, and today we are going to be upgrading this beautiful Mac Cube, Power Mac G4 Cube. And so I got all the upgrade parts for it, and uh, we're going to do that, and uh, we're going to get this thing uh, going, uh, and we're going to soup it up a little bit. We're going to make it run even faster than it was the day that it was made, okay? So I'll be right back. So, um, so here are the parts that we're going to be putting in it today. Now we've already got the uh, upgraded RAM in it. We already got the upgraded RAM in it. Um, and we, we made it, uh, maxed it out, it's at 1.5 gigabytes. Um, and so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a solid state drive in it. This is a Crucial M500. And uh, this is a used one. Uh, I picked it up really cheap off eBay, but it'll, it'll work fine. It tested it okay, there's no dead uh, sectors or anything on it. And um, so yeah, so we're going to put this in there. It's 120 gigabyte. And we're gonna we got a three partition drive. I've already cloned this from my um, iMac G3 over there, and I'm running 9.2 on one partition, Tiger one partition, and Leopard on one partition. I cloned it to this one, so this has the exact same information on it, and it should work just fine in the cube here. And the next thing we got is obviously that's the IDE connector in there, so we got the uh, IDE to SATA connector. So this will go into the SSD, and this will plug into the uh, ribbon cable that the old hard ID, or IDE hard drive was in. And plus there's a Molex connector too that will hook up on it. Then we have an upgraded uh, processor board. This is a 550 megahertz. The one that's in here now is a 450 megahertz. So we're going to upgrade this. And this is probably off of one of those... Um, Power Max that came out at the same time this one did, um, but it should work in there just fine. Uh, I was told it was tested and performs fine. It looks brand new actually. Uh, doesn't look like it's ever been used. But anyway, so that's going to go in, and then we're going to be putting the fan in it. These things had a uh, these things had a, a fan that. Uh, could have been put in it. There's a bay in it for the fan, um, but Steve Jobs, you know, he likes everything nice and quiet, so this is all uh, convection cooled. Uh, draws a quarter from the bottom, comes out through the top. And uh, so anyway, um, we're going to put a fan in it to keep everything cool, because you can never have a computer cool enough. And then this last but not least is the uh, NVIDIA uh, this is a 7500 uh, 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 board, and this was an upgraded build-to-order board at the time also. There's three boards that run in this thing that come stock with the uh, 128 uh, Rage board. This is quite a bump up. This has got 32 meg of memory, where the Rage only has 16 meg of memory. So, again, this should just uh, swap in there, no problem. Uh, we might have to take this plate off and switch it out with a C. Um, but it, it should fit in there because this is for the cube, so we'll see. I, I didn't, you know, I haven't had the video board out of that yet, so I haven't had a chance to actually compare them. But anyway, so that's going to be going in there, and uh, and I'll have links to all the places that I got this, these parts at. And um, yeah, so anyway, yeah, and uh, the uh, the reason why the CD drive wasn't working when I was showing you guys the the last time on it the cd drive uh is because uh dummy me i had this thing reversed so actually i had it upside down so that's why it wasn't working so but it, it works fine so anyway i reason why i just clone this is saves a lot of time and uh, it, it's the way that i like it formatted so anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to start taking this apart and i've never had one of these apart i have a guide on the computer um, saved on there. Uh, I went to iFixit, but they didn't show a very, very, not as much of a detailed one as I'd like to. But anyway, so we'll, we'll kind of be learning together here. And also on this, uh, the case on this, um, um, I told, 
you guys that I'm going to do a tutorial on some plastic, especially on vintage Apple plastics. This one um, is actually a mold injected polycarbonate uh, enclosure. And um, and I'll tell you, uh, when we do the tutorial on it, I'll, I'll tell you some of the differences you, you can kind of spot versus over the acrylic. Uh, but the advantage of the polycarbonate over the acrylic is it's a little bit more forgiving as far as cracking. Um, and it, it stretch, the material stretches more. The uh, acrylic does not stretch. It's, it's very brittle. It does flex a little bit, but you can flex polycarbonate a lot better. Um, the downside is you cannot polish polycarbonate up as much as um, your acrylic. Um, and the reason by that is because this is very heat sensitive and uh, some of the processes that you use to polish up acrylic, you cannot do it on this guy. So anyway, um, yeah, so let's take this guy apart, okay? I want to add also uh, on this uh, video card, um, uh, it's it's a uh, a Radeon 7500 32 megabyte uh, card, and it's uh, for the G4 and G4 cube. It has a ADC port on it, VGA port, and it's AGP, which is the uh, the slot on it. So, anyway, yeah, and uh, you know uh, I only got this card for for 29 bucks. And uh, it was shipping and tax and everything. It was thirty nine fifty four. So I thought that was pretty darn good. And and I paid twenty bucks for this card. And I paid twelve for this. And the fan was twelve dollars, I think, on that. And the and the uh, IDC connector, I believe, was uh, eight dollars. So parts aren't that expensive, you know, uh, if you take the time, look for them and stuff. Um, what I did try to find was the gigab gigabit Ethernet card for these guys. These were those were built to order, and um, if you find one of those, uh, those are like gold. So because I'd love to get this thing on there, so that way it'll it'll make it on the internet much more useful on the internet, um, be a lot faster. But uh, you know, we'll just Ethernet it into the airport there, and and we'll we'll see how we can do online and. And the reason why I also clone this is because I got some programs on this on Tiger, um, you know, like the internet and stuff like that. So I thought that'd be real good, and we'll update it and stuff for the for the uh, the leopard part of it on the uh, per, on the uh, partition. So anyway, okay, be back in a minute. Okay, guys, so we're going to uh, take the cube apart so we can start putting these uh, updated components in it. And so what we're going to do is, um, and I'm sorry, I'm just I'm focusing on this, so I'm not going to be in the frame here. So anyway, we're going to take and we're going to turn this over and then we're going to take it out here and that will out and we will sit that there. And I'm going to put this over here on my desk. And so anyway, uh, so yeah, so there we go. That's the the cube there. And I'm gonna try to get us all in frame here. And if you hear my uh, Smirky, she is wild tonight. So she runs on the table here, that's who it is. So she's being very bad, but she's hard to stay mad at because she's cute. So anyway, all right. So like I said, I've never had one of these apart before. And uh, I know uh, I, I looked on the uh, user guide there. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take this top case off and because we need to move these heat sinks anyway. And I know as far as getting to the hard drive, there's a little uh, door here that you pop open. You take the airport card out and you just pop it open. and. Uh, and then get to the drive and stuff. But anyway, so what we're going to do, <laughs> uh, we're going to take these screws out. And I believe, and I just make sure we're, make sure you're getting this here. Yeah, okay, good. So anyway, we're, I think it is a T10, I think. Hold on. This is my 
vintage Radio Shack uh, part or uh, you know it's, it's nut. It's got okay. It's got torque tips, square drives, Phillip, and flat blade, and uh, so yeah. So it comes in real handy there. So anyway, uh, the I fix it is much nicer, but this is before I fix it ever had theirs out. And uh, I don't even know if you can get these anymore because most of the Radio Shacks are out of business. I think their website they just sell stuff online now. Uh, I haven't checked, but you guys can always check that. But it's just a it's it's not a very expensive kit. It's not the best quality, but hey, it's good enough to do what we need to do here. And I've worked on many things with it, and I haven't broken anything on it yet. So let me see which size it is here. Like I said, I think it's a T10. Let me see here. No. Let's see here, we'll go to the next one here. No. I don't either. Hmm. Let's see here. Uh, okay, let's try this one. Okay, there we go, that'll work. That is a T... What is it? Oh, I guess it is, it is a T10. Okay, good, all right. So we will put this in here, and we will take these off here. Boy, that came out real easy. So I'm gonna put the screws behind it here. I think all these are the same size. Like I say, you can see the upgraded RAM we, we put on it when I first got this thing. And then I did had a, an airport card I stuck in it too, and airport works on it. However, uh, I have to have it on an older network because it doesn't have that newer security stuff on. Too bad you can't put a um, airport extreme card in there. That would definitely work a lot better. But anyway, so, so those are off. And then I gotta take See, I think. Let's see. Yeah, I gotta take these out too. And there's a uh, reset switch on this on the inside too, power management switch too. And I'm gonna. I was doing some reading on it, and I'm gonna reset that too. And I also took the PRAM battery out of my uh, slot low G3. This is a new battery because I'm gonna stick in it and and uh, all these things and see if it makes this uh, proximity switch work like it should. Hopefully it will. So these are real long here on the sides here. Okay. Oops, all right. Okay. Get two more to go here. Here, Smirk, you gonna lay up here? Here, here, Smirk, come here, 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 come here, lay up here, here, come here, 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 lay, here, you can lay there now, get in your chair. So, pardon me, guys, sorry about that. Okay, so let's get this out of here. So, um, uh, my little chart here. So, anyway. There is a cable on here we got to be real careful with. And it goes to the switch there. There we go. Got that unplugged. And I'm just looking at this thing here. And uh, all surface mounted components, so that's good. Right, so we will lay that over here for the time being. I'll put that over there. And uh, let's see what you guys can see. Okay, all right. So here's the graphics board. And then the motherboard's behind here. And then the processor board is behind this. So, okay. It's very interesting looking at it here. So, okay. Let's 
So let's see here. Let's. this off here. Let's take the airport card out. Take that out. And then we're gonna, you know, this thing just swings open like that. Okay. And I'll spin this around. Oh, smart. Come on. They don't want to see you. Anyway, um, you can see the hard drive in there. So anyway, Smarky, come on, get down, come on, come on, please, please be a good kitty, okay? Come on, here, lay on, lay on the chair over there, here. Behave yourself, all right? All right. So anyway, um, and I see the other end of the hard drive here. Looks like there's, I can tell somebody's had this open before because there's supposed to be a, two screws that hold this hard drive in. No biggie, I have lots of screws. But anyways, and then you can see the uh, cable for it there. And I see the Molex connector for it too. So, okay. So let me take the hard drive out here. And let's see what size this is. That is a smaller one. So on some of this stuff, I'll speed up in a video. Um, I know you don't want to take, you know, watch me for a half hour fumbling around for this stuff here. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna take this out here, the screw out here, that holds the hard drive in. That's a long screw, man. these two hold it yeah now let's get this out of here I'll get this heat sink out of here screw here for it so this heat sink should just come out It helps if you take all the screws out. There we go. There, look at that. All right. And there's the hard drive in there. And all its glory. There's the Molex for it. And, uh, okay, so let's take, pull ID, ID connector. Okay. Pull that out. Pull the Molex off of it. There we go. Then we will slide the hard drive out. And this has a Apple drive in it. It's a uh, 20 gigabyte. And it's a Western Digital, so that's a decent drive. And um, you can tell it's an old it's an old drive. Let's see what the what is the date on this thing. The date on this is. Um, Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's a WD caviar. Oh, that's pretty, pretty good. Uh, July 2000. So this was probably the original hard drive in this thing right there. You see, it says 22,000 there. So yeah, interesting. All right, so we'll put that over there because then we'll have to. Uh, put the IDE in here it'll go this way and what we'll do is I'll take I'll probably just velcro it on here that's how I usually do a lot of that stuff I just use a velcro and stick on there and it'll be fine and that way you can always yank it off if you want to take it out of there um, but yeah we'll do that here in a bit 
and then this is the uh, IDE to SATA connector here, right there, and that'll plug in where the other one used to be. So, okay, so we got that out of there, great. All right, so now what we're gonna do, like I said, the optical drive is good. So now what I need to do is get this um, board out. So let's flip it over here. Like I said, guys, I'm, I'm all new to these uh, G4 cubes. I've never had one, but they're pretty, pretty interesting. So anyway, um, all right, so I know we gotta take, there's two screws here we gotta take loose because that holds the bracket on it. Let's, let's see if it's the same size. No, nope. it's the bigger one probably. Let's see, yep, T10. So we'll take that off of there. We'll set that down there. Set that down there. Okay, so that goes on that. So that's loose. And then there's another screw up here that holds it. Another T10. And they're all the same size, so that makes it nice. All right, so, all right, so we, see how we get this out of here. So probably gonna take, all right, so probably gonna take this whole board and everything out probably. Let's see. Okay, yep. And then there's a little cable right here we gotta take off here. Oh boy. Let's see here. Let me just unplug it here. The board from it here. There we go. There we go. Easier than trying to pull the cable off there. So that's the uh, 128 Rage board. And then this is the uh, new, newer one. And I'm just looking at it and there's definitely uh, some differences here. Yeah, it's just, it looks like it's, looks like it's got a, I don't know, that's weird. But it's all got the same connectors on it. It's the same size. Yep, got all the same mounts on it. Now let's take a look at the, the business end of it here. So let's see here. So this is the new one. This is the, oh, so yeah, we are gonna have to uh, take, because this is doesn't have this little tab on it here. So, all right, so we gotta trade the end plates on it here. Um, uh, right, there's two screws there. I gotta take these nuts off here. So let me uh, see if I got a pair of pliers up, otherwise I gotta go out in the garage and get one. Okay, so I had to go out in the garage and get a couple uh, tools here. So, all right, so let's um, take, okay, let's take this one off. Let's see what we got here. I got my pliers too. I just didn't want to. I didn't want. I didn't want to screw these nuts up on this thing. There we go. They're loose, so I can probably just spin them off now. Yeah, this one we can. And then. Yeah, I'm just trying to. I'm looking at this thing, how to get the video, the uh, motherboard out. I'm just looking at it here, so. And we'll get this one out. And then we gotta take, see if my screwdriver's small enough here. Yeah. Take these out here, these little, little screws, screws here. You know, and, <laughs> It was nice and sunny, but we're actually gonna be getting a winter storm here, here in California. 
we've had one of the driest Februarys, because February is usually a pretty wet month for us, but we're probably going to get, uh, it's called the Miracle March. We'll get everything in March, and there'll be lots of things flooding and everything, so. All right, so now, uh, oh yeah, I got to take those off. Looks like there's a, yep, take those off. And take that one off. And some of these parts I might be putting up on eBay too, so, you know, it just depends. Um, somebody might need a rage card. Alright, so got that off of there. Okay, we'll put that over there. So now we got, see right here it says on the back of it here, uh, Rage, one ATI 128 Pro. Okay, let's take this bracket off here. Yeah, it's loose. That's loose. Okay, good. So we'll spin these off. I'm going to keep the original hardware on each card because you just never know. Alright, there we go. Get that one off there. Okay, so that's going to go with that one there. And then we're going to take these little screws out. Or if I need to take those out. Hmm, I'll try something here. Um, so the thing about magnetic tips, you tend to grab everything you don't need to, to grab here. Okay. that out. Yeah, I do need to take those little screws out. I'm just being lazy, just trying to take take less of what I have to take out. Okay, I'm in there. Alright. Alright, so now we will do the transplant. Look at that, fits perfectly. Nice. Of course, this was a built to order board, so but yeah, nice. Like I said, I like to get one of those gigabit uh, ethernet cards and I've been scouring the internet form. I guess they are very hard to find. And I'm sure when I do find one, it'll probably be mega expensive. I know Greg, he'd probably like Greg from uh, Rug K Mods. I'm sure he would, he would like to get his hands on those too. So I got that there, got that on there. Okay, so now we'll put the little tiny little screws back in here. And I apologize for the light, guys. I got every freaking light on in here in my room. I was going to do this out in the garage, but um, it's just uh, I got some noisy fluorescent lights out there. I'm just wind this thing in there. And just making sure these are in there real good. Okay, so those look good. So those are in there real good. All right, so now we will put, hmm, just thinking here, guys, okay? It's dangerous. So this one, put 
this in here. Just see how these go in. These look pretty good. I'll put these in here. Alright. And like I said, I'm gonna I'll speed this video up here occasionally, so don't take it personal. It's just it's just a lot of dead time screwing all this stuff together. This one in. And like I said, this has the uh, AD ADC connector on it and it has the uh, VGA. I do not have an AGC monitor, so we'll be using VGA. And there we go, so transplant is completed. And I will stick it right there for the time being. I'll go ahead and put this back on the rage board here to get this put back together because like I said I don't want to lose anything here so let's see here and there and I'm gonna put the little screws in here and then this will be all back together the original board and then we can dig into this thing a little further so we can get the motherboard out so I can put the new one in and um, I'll thermal paste it too. I have to thermal paste it. I'm sure the thermal paste is petrified on it. If it even has any on it, who knows. Okay, done. Back together. All right. Okay, so now, now this little board here Okay, and plug there. And let's see, we can. Pull. Let's see what kind of connectors we got here. Trying to see where, oh, okay, I see the, oh, okay, that's where the fan goes in there. Okay. So the fan lays down in it, okay, which makes sense. Hmm. I might need to take that other end off of it. That'll be interesting. I want to get this heat sink out. So I suppose I should. Disconnect the board here. Uh, let's get a key on it there. We'll take that. Let's push on it. Pull that off. There we go. Good. All right. Let's set that over here in our parts to put back in it. Alright, so I think I might do flip this over here. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. So it looks like two T10s here, and it looks like this whole thing probably left out. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Let's see. Like I said, guys, I haven't had one of these things apart. And I've worked on a lot of I've worked on a lot of Macs, but not this one. I suppose if I was smart I should go on my little thing here and look all about it there. But just kind of looking at it, it looks like this whole thing just slides out. Take the screws out here. That's held in there. There's a screw there. You gotta get that off to get that fan in there too.
I can take that screw out, that screw out, that screw out, that screw out. And there's nothing on the bottom holding that in. So let's do that. down on a little post in there. Okay. Yeah, I suppose I'd take these RAM modules out too. I don't want to screw these up. Alright, let's pull these puppies out here. I have a lot of parts here. You know, hope it works when we get it back together. I'll be very, very disappointed here. Okay. All right. So now I can get to the screws here. It's a motherboard screw. There's another motherboard screw, but kind of thinking. Okay. Let me see here. Let's just pull out. There's a little clip in there. There we go. That just pulls out there. Okay. There's that button right there. That's the uh, power management reset button right there. But we'll get it all back together before we play with that. Hmm. Yeah. Just trying to think here how we can get that out of there. So we get this top plate out of here, then we can do that. I don't think we have to take that drive out to do that. Didn't really want to do that. Huh, guys? He, I'll tell you, man. Me, um... Okay, I'll tell you what. Let me, uh... That's loose there. That's loose. There's a screw there. I did not see that. I'm sure there's some screws that, that holds that board in there. There. Let me just take these off here. I think these are all the same. Okay. And I wonder if I had to take those off. Oops. Oh boy, hold on there. Sorry guys. Like I said, I know it's not very exciting for you. Just watching me work on this thing. But like I said, this is all uncharted territory for me. But we will um, see if that makes it come off. Probably just the door here. 
Yeah. Okay, so these little plugs there, just gotta be real careful with this puppy. Alright. Okay, so alright, so I had to read a little bit. So okay, so um so you had take uh, I had to get the logic board out, we take these screws out here. I took the four out already. Then you take the uh, three spring heat sink screws out. Then um, I do need to take this uh, modem off here. Because it's just going to get in the way here. Alright. And then. Um, it just plugs onto the board. We'll just sit it right here. And then what we're going to do is on the heat riser here, it says take a slotted screwdriver and kind of lift that up there a little bit. So I'm going to use my knife here. Maybe. Come on. <clears throat> Come on. Come out there. Okay guys, I got it. I, there was a <laughs> there was a screw there that I didn't get out. That's why it wasn't allowed to come up. So anyway, so now uh, it is free. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take and slide this out. That's the plan anyway. Let's see here, it's supposed to it's supposed to lift up. There's another screw in here I didn't see. Let's see. I finally got the uh, the uh, the logic board out of it there, and uh, I'll tell you what it uh, it was in there good, but I got it out, and, and as you can see, um, let me flip it over here. Let me uh, get the card here, so you can see there's not much thermal paste on this thing. I mean, this thing was pretty, pretty uh, non-existent. And here's the, I'll bring it over here. And this is what the board goes down on like that. And then it plugs into the logic board. But see, there's hardly, there's hardly any thermal paste at all on that thing. And this thing's a massive uh, heat sink here. So anyway, so what I've been doing is I've been trying to figure out, uh, you know, one thing, usually these fans are marked which way the air flows, so I had to plug it in my little cheapy USB charger, and uh, so it blows out this way. But anyway, the uh, the fan, the brackets are right here. You can see, I'm trying to get it right here. See, there's brackets right here, and this thing just slips in there just like that, and you get the screws that go in there to hold it. And I'm probably going to use use two screws because it's it's going to hold it because be honest with you I, I have hard hard time getting this heat sink out and if I can 
get that all in there, then we're good. But you can see it, it'll look really nice. Because, I mean, this was made to have a fan in it. There's the fan brackets right here. This is a 15 millimeter thick, 80 by 80 millimeter. And uh, Greg from Rug Came On said that you can get a 25 uh, millimeter in there too, but you have to kind of bend the brackets out a little bit. But yeah, this fits in there just fine, so I'm going to go with that. Now, the only thing I'm trying to figure out is where, like I said, I could hook it to the Molex connector. I've done that before. I did that on my uh, G3. But I kind of wanted to actually uh, use the pinouts on the motherboard, but I have not been able to find them yet. So anyway, um, I will be back in a bit here. And uh, I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to thermal paste this down, but i got to figure out a couple things first before I do it. And I'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys, so I got the fan mounted in it right there. And I got, I just, I got three screws in it there. And I mean, they're just the perfect length. You get about three turns on them, and that's perfect. And then there's one, if you look down there, you'll see one right there, be to your right. That's in there. And I mean, it's in there good. And I got the cable all ran underneath there. So that way I can hook it in to the Molex connector on the hard drive here. So that's what we're going to do. So we are going to start putting it back together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this thermal paste off here. On here, this looks awful. And I got to remember where I put my thermal paste at. I got to find my thermal paste. And then we're going to repaste this and then put that new uh, processor, processor on there. All right, be back in a minute. Okay, guys, so I'm starting to put it back together. So I got the um, thermal paste on the heat sink and on the, the board there, on the, the new, uh, um, the daughter board that's got the processor on it that plugs into the logic board. So anyway, and I got the hard drive in it, and basically I'm just gonna let it free float in there uh, because it's not gonna go anywhere and those things weigh nothing. And you can see it in here. Um, I was gonna Velcro it. I did have a screw in it, but it's just too tight because of that ribbon cable. There's not a lot of room in there, so I don't wanna, when I get the motherboard on it, I don't want it to uh, put it in a bind or anything. So anyway, um, I'm going to start reassembling this. And, um, and like I said, it is a pain to get this board back in it. But uh, uh, when, I, when I get it back in, I'll show you. And then we'll start uh, reassembling it. Okay. So um, like I said, uh, this board uh, is... Hopefully it goes in easier than it came out, um, you know, because it's been in there for probably forever. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, like I said, it's got a heavy duty heat sink, but like I said, it's, we got the fan in it. And um, so, yeah, we're gonna get it to work in here. And uh, sorry for the weird photos there. I got the camera on the tripod here. So anyway, all right, so be back in a minute and then we'll start uh, putting it back together. Okay, guys, so I got the motherboard back in, and um, I must say it did go in pretty easy, um, a lot easier than I thought, it, because it, like I said, it was a pain getting it out, but it definitely went in a lot easier, and there's definitely a, a combination how to do it, so now I know how to do it, but anyway, yeah, so it's in, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start screwing this thing back together, so I have to put these uh, screw, spring screws, this holds the... Uh, um, the uh, logic board to the daughter board that's got the processor on it and it keeps it all tied together so I'm gonna uh, it keeps it tight on that plug so anyway we're gonna find my tools here uh, the kitties are sleeping right now so they're not bothering me at the moment so let's see all right so we're gonna get this on here and um, Try to. My big issue is remember where all the screws go. That's going to be fun. But anyway, so I'll move this a little closer, maybe, so you can kind of see kind of what I'm doing there. Um, yeah, that's pretty close. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to tighten these screws down, and this is going to keep everything together here. And like I said, it got all. Thermal paste it down real good. And this one 
Hmm. Let's double check something here. That one doesn't seem to tighten down very much. I don't know why that is. Let me just make sure everything looks good. I mean, it's all in there. It's all plugged in and everything. This just keeps it locked down. Yeah. doesn't go down every minute. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe the standoff's different on this. Let me just check some here. Look here. Let's see if these are different. Mm. Yeah, the thread's longer. That's why. So that must take a shorter thread. Let me see here. So there are one long one. So there's two short ones and one long one. Hmm. Well, I think I remember something about the gold one. Hold on, let me look at my computer here. gold screw, that's right, the gold screw goes up in the front here, okay. This is the gold screw. There we go, that's better. All right, this in here. It's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. I mean, this is very interesting how they did this thing. This thing is so compact. Okay, so now that looking that looks better. Okay, so that looks much better. All right, so now what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna put screws back in here. Um, <laughs> okay, like I said, a lot of these are the same. Uh, let's see here. Goes to the top plate. These go the that goes to the top end there. So I think I believe this goes in there. Nope. This is not the right one. Let's see here. There we go, that's better. That's the right one. I'll flip it over and I'll put the other side in here. And there's one right there. It looks to be about the same one. Maybe not. No. Oh, yes. we're not lined up. That's why. There we go. Now we're lined up. Let's see here. And yeah, my kitties were very bad today. I was had the TV going, and all of a sudden it went out. Well, make a long story short, they chewed the wire that goes from the adapter from for the uh, cable box not the 110 side the low voltage side they chewed that completely through so the uh, the uh, cable box not getting any power so after i get this put back together i'm going to be working on that so i can watch my tv up here so anyway so that's back the uh, io ports are all in place nothing got broken i was being very very careful with those and you can see the uh, this is the SSD drive in here right there and uh, once everything's in there it's not going to go anywhere and then the uh, fan is you can see the fan uh, let's see you see the red top of the fan down there okay that's the fan it will be 
suck this to the top so it'll bring the air up, blows it up, and makes it radiate off the heat sinks here. So anyway, what we're going to do next, uh, let's see here. Um, I will plug that in here in a bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll put the corner stands in here. Finally, I got that in there. I just had to keep pulling that insulation out there. Now it's now it's laying down in there just like it should now. So these are all in. And so now, uh, I'll put this modem card back in. Let's see here. Goes in the port there. So now that that's in there, and um, and I realized that you know actually there is a I guess that's just the cable in there. Um, there is a plate actually that goes over um, this optical drive because I was looking in the uh, on the Apple thing there, and there's a plate that that uh, slips in there. So but. You know, and then you take that off and you get access to that. But so apparently this has been worked on before. But anyway, uh, yeah. So let's um, get that on there, that on there. So let's start plugging in the boards here. So I gotta remember which is which here. So. Okay. Let's see, that does not go in there. Actually, you know what I need to do, guys, before I get too carried away? I gotta put the screws back in the board here. So let's start plugging these boards back in. That's the RAM. Okay. Um, okay. Alrighty. Let's see here. So that's the daughter board for the uh, graphics card here. And I think it'll just be easier to plug this. Let me see where this goes here. So 
so that goes there and this plugs into that okay all right we'll do this here plug that into there Come on, it's not that hard, guys. Come on. There we go. All right, we're in. Okay. So let's put that in. Let me plug this little cable in first. And then uh, it goes in like this. Okay. this thing in here that all right come on Let's get it plugged in there there we go all right there we go now we're lined up so we'll get this Come on, get in there. There we go. There we go. Now we're in. Okay. That's good. That's plugged into there. That's plugged into there. And then I'll plug it. No. Nope. We're good. All right. So the graphics board is in it. Okay. So let me... Um, Couple of screws that go in there to hold that in there so it doesn't come out. All right, guys, I found where that plug went. It goes on the back. It goes on this um, riser board here on the back side of the graphics card. So I did find where it went. So now that I got that <sighs> cat, you're really getting in trouble. Smirk. Behave yourself, okay? Good grief. All right, so let's put this back in here again. That's plugged in there, right? Yep. Looks good. All right, so let's put that back in there. So we're in there again. Okay. Looks good. And this will go actually behind this wire. It'll go behind these little clips here. RAM clips here. This will go in behind there, like that, like it's supposed to. Very good. Open that back up. There we go. All right. All right, let's put these screws back in again. Oh, I'll be so happy when I get this thing back together and running. That'd be great. I'm very eager to see what it does here.
Okay, you get this in again. Get that tightened up there. Get this in again. Nice and tight again. All right, sweet. Okay. All righty. So that's in, that's in, that's down, that's plugged in. Everything's plugged in now. Now we can take and put this board back in. And what really bothers me is there's a connector there, but I don't know. I don't see anything that goes to it. So hopefully I didn't bury a wire or something. All right, so we're gonna push that down in there, okay? Because I do not see anything that goes to that. Okay, we are getting there, folks. Slowly. Okay, that's in there, that's in there. All right. So let's go ahead and stick the ram in. Okay, that's in. We're getting close, guys. in here. <laughs> I forgot because there's no uh, hard drive in there. That's those that, uh, that heat sink went on that hard drive. Interesting. Yeah, see right here. Uh, well, that was really for the benefit of the uh, heat sink. I don't know what. Uh, Interesting. 
Well, and it's not going to hurt it because it's got a fan in there. That's for sure. It's not going to be generating the heat like it used to. Covered up, so you're probably only going to see part of it. Hmm. Well, Let's see here. Well, the screws will not fall out, so that's the good thing. And I mean, when the when this thing's all buttoned up, hmm, I don't know. I'll have to maybe use some double-sided. Uh, tape to stick that down to keep the aesthetics of it. Hmm. Well, let's see. I know I have some. Let me take a look here. We'll just use some double-sided tape. That way it won't fall out. So let's pull this out. And what we'll do is we're just going to pull a double-sided tape on these three little brackets there. All right, so let's do that. It is not going to hurt anything because, like I said, we got a fan on there and might as well have as much heat as we can. I mean, uh, cooling as we can. Pardon me. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to stick this. And this stuff is double-sided sticky tape, so... But you know what? I don't need a piece. I need a real tiny little piece here. Not much. Like that. And we're going to stick it right there. That way we don't cover up the holes here. Because like I said, those screws are capped. They're not going to come out. Get that one there. So as far as the upgrade of it, the only the only real challenge was pulling the motherboard out. That was whew, that was that was a nightmare, but it went in actually very easily once you figure out the the proper sequence of what you got to do. Okay. You'll see, see, it's not going to come out now. The double side tape's going to hold it down real good. And as it uh, warms up in there, it'll really be in there. And I'm just going to wind these down a little bit so they. I mean, they'll rattle, but they ain't going to come out. So there we go. All right, good. All right, so now what we're going to do. So we are going to put the proximity switch back on here. That's what we did. So we're going to plug this back in. There we go. That goes right like that. It's starting to look like a computer again. All right, so these four little ones go on the top here. We'll get these started first.
And sorry I'm not talking much, guys. I'm getting kind of tired here. I guess it's been a long day. But um, all I have to do is just uh, get that fan hooked up to the power here. Um, all right, good, sweet. All right, so now I hope that works. Put screws in here. So. Yeah, it's funny, this thing still, you know, I mean, this hard drive, I mean, I, mean I, I felt heavier hard drives, but I mean, you don't realize how much weight those things add. But, I'm gonna turn this a little bit, actually, here, let me move this here a little bit. Getting out of, okay, these screws up here. PRAM battery out of my um, <clears throat> iMac over there, the G3, and because uh, I want to make sure this thing boots up. Okay, there's the plus sign right there. Okay, all right. This is a new one too, so shouldn't be any issue. Guys, it's not right. There we go. Finally, he. All right. Okay. So we are almost there, guys. Um, just gotta take and get this power on this thing here. So let's see here. That's why I have the Molex up here. Trying to think here what we want to do. Boy, it should be nice. I just don't think that's going to work on that adapter board. do it on the um, on the optical drive mm. yeah I don't need that
But yeah, yeah really, it's, I think it's, it's just to get the fan wired up here. Okay, guys, so um, I got the uh, fan wire hooked up. So what I did is I hooked it. It's behind the airport card here. Let me open this back up here. Maybe. There we go. All right. So I open it up and I get it. Um, I shortened the cable quite a bit there and it's into the Molex connector. I just tapped it into behind that Molex connector there. So we're good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put it uh, back in the case here and make sure handle still works. And we're going to drop it in there in there and now we're going to hook it back up so let me uh do all the connections let me hook it all up and then we'll do a power up okay guys so um i'm booting it up um i've <laughs> this has been quite an experience here um it's all back together you can hear it's it's really quiet i got the phone really close here to it and it does uh, it's a 12 volt fan by well the 5 volt instead because it's much quieter uh, when it was a 12 volt it sounded like a hair dryer so uh, it really pumps the air through it and um, so I have Tiger and I have Leopard installed on this um, I had to reconfigure the drive because for some reason it wouldn't read it so I basically just uh, wiped the drive and then I just set this up on uh, target mode and then I just had my uh, MacBook uh, the old MacBook Pro um, and I use that for my source drive and I because this it's kind of funny even though this says it's a CD drive or a DVD drive it only reads CDs so I'm not sure if there's wrong labels on the drive or what but anyway you can see it's booting up here and uh, so that's why I had to use my other computer and I had a uh, firewire to firewire on it so I could get it uh, brought up but you see it's it's coming up now and uh, I do have to install quite a few things. I do have uh, 10 4 Fox on it. Um, definitely works on the web much better. But you can see the, the dual partition on it. Um, I did have 9.2.2 on it. Um, but I took it off. Um, I'm going to reload it on there again. It was causing me some issue. But uh, I'll go about to where it says about this Mac here. And this is just a temporary setup here. So, um, okay, so you'll see it's. And the other thing that was wrong is two things that were wrong. So, when I got that card in it, after I booted it up, it only showed it as a 400 megahertz card. Uh, it was not a 550 megahertz card. So, I took it, I had to take this all apart again, so it put the uh, other original board. Uh, uh, daughter board back on it that had the 450 processor back on it put it on and yeah i was not very happy and i contacted the ebay seller and so he's supposed to be uh basically just refunding my money back to me and he did apologize for it um apparently they buy a lot of computer parts and they just take whatever the word that they get it from from the seller to them and it was mislabeled so anyway and then the other thing <laughs> uh when it comes to the video board, another interesting thing. Let me just uh, hit more info here. And we're going down here to uh, graphics. And this was supposed to be, um, let me get my paper here. I got it from Use Max. And I, I never had any trouble with these guys, okay? Uh, hang on, I'm trying to do this with one hand here. Bear with me here. Uh, it was supposed to be a uh, Radeon 7500 32 megabyte uh, card, right? Well, look what we have in it now. It's actually a GeForce 2MX. And that was also a built-to-order card for these uh, thing. And I believe this one, uh, Greg, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is even a little bit nicer than the, uh, the Radeon one, but or, or comparable anyway. So, um, and yeah, it's 32 bit supported. This is the resolution I'm running at right now. Um, so yeah, 
And so those are the other two. That was the other thing that was wrong. Uh, fans working fantastic. I mean, this thing stays cool. I've left this on for a whole day. Now, I just put my hand over the proximity switch. The proximity switch is still acting a little weird. Now, see, it, 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 it works when it wants to. All right. I did a PRAM reset on it. I put the PRAM battery in it. Um, and uh, it's working better than it was. All right. But it's still... Um, when I take and unplug this thing for a while and I plug it back into the power, um, sometimes it will turn on, sometimes it will not. And if I unplug the power again and plug it in, it fires up no problem. And, uh, and I can turn it off with the switch, but when it goes all the way off, when I put my finger back on, it will not turn it on. So I'm not sure. It could be just an issue with the proximity switch. I've, I've had it out. And I've checked it, and it's it's in the right. Everything, all the wires, all the components look good. On I don't see anything obviously cosmetic with it. Um, I've got no way of checking it uh, as far as like if there's a components that's got a bad value or something on it. I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah. So um, it's working really good. I mean, I got to tweak it a little bit as far, as far as the system goes. But what we're gonna do is. Uh, we're going to go to a restart here. We're going to try it and we'll see how it works. And then I'm going to hold down on the option key here. And then we're going to boot in the leopard here. So let's see how it works here. Let's see if it cooperates here. And you can hear the speaker popping. It does get audio. I don't get the boot chime on it though. And I think it's because of the, um, of the, this is also uh, one of these uh, USB speakers. They're wireless and I think it's, by the time it boots up, it doesn't get the, the chime on it. Um, but the audio works fine on it. I mean, it'll, it'll crank. So I'm just letting this load up here. And you should see the two partitions. You'll see the tiger and you'll see the um, leopard. And uh, it takes just a little time to boot into it. And uh, with the SSD, I really would think this would perform a little bit quicker. Just, I don't know. Um, now you see right there now see sometimes it does that see it did not it, it does that sometimes let's re do it again here when I do a restart on this so all I have to do is unplug it plug it back in hold down the option key and it'll show up that both drives no problem so it's just doing s s a couple little weird things and I know I'll probably get it figured out I know it's just software um, I'll have to read a little bit more on the cube to find out, uh, you know, go into forums and find out as far as the issues and stuff. And again, I'm just waiting for it to uh, to boot up. Okay, so see, see, it's not going to do it. So if I take and I unplug it, um, I'll pl unplug it and plug it back in. So watch, I'll, I'll turn the power off of it here. You see, you can see this button here. See, so, you know, do it again. I'll get a hold down on it here. Let it turn all the way off. Okay, now it's off. Now see if I go to hit it again. It doesn't do anything. It won't turn back on. So what I have to do is I have to unplug this thing for about... I'll try to do this with one hand here. Unplug this thing for about uh, seven seconds. And I'll plug it back in here. And then I will hold down on the option key. And then it will uh, boot into both of those drives. It'll pull it up on the boot picker here. So, that's up. And this uh, gateway monitor it still works pretty good. Um, I think Greg Rucke made a comment that he wish he had one or he couldn't find one or something. I don't remember what it was. Oh, see, there you go. So there's both drives now. So it shows tiger and it shows leopard. So we're going to go into, uh, I'll wait for the watch here to get done here. And then we'll go into leopard. And I did do the firmware update on it. It's 4.1.9, I believe. Um, for the G4. And I know this is only a 400 
50 megahertz processor and I, and I know that's probably a lot to do with the, the speed on it too. So, and like I said, on the internet it works okay. You know, it's it's real slow on the internet. You know, um, it's only 10 base 100 ethernet. Um, like I said, if I had one of those gigabit ethernet cards, definitely would help a whole lot on the internet as far as going to one site to another site. But I know you're limited, limited with the machine performance on the uh, the um, address bus on it too, because it's only a 100 megahertz bus on it. So now it's gonna boot in the Leopard here. Takes a little bit longer to boot in the Leopard. And like I said, I have to get, get things set up a little bit smoother on it, because I know there's some little fine tuning you can do like on 104 Fox and stuff like that and I'll have to uh, get in contact with somebody on that and uh, find out the little tricks on it. So there we go. Now we're go booting into Leopard here. You get the blue screen at first and it all. Hang just for a second. There we go. Going into the uh, desktop here of Leopard and there we go booting up and a little spinning wheel up there and there we go and the clocks wi-fi's there we go got the time on it there so that's all all loaded up there and yeah so we're we're in there uh like i said it's a little it's it's a little laggy getting on the internet here so i'll click it right here and this is going to be a really long video guys okay i mean believe me i i've cut like four hours off this video it was just uh some stuff is just absolutely boring. I don't want to bore you guys too much with it. But anyway, I'm running 104 7400 uh, Fox on it. So I don't know. There's a 7500 too. I don't know which is better for this machine, the G4 Cube. Uh, Greg, if you see this video, uh, let me know um, uh, what, what would be a better uh, browser on it. But you see it loads it up. And uh, yeah. So yeah, guys, so anyway, this has been a long uh, video in terms of uh, going through this thing, getting this thing up and running. And uh, when you see it, because I'm still, I'm actually still editing the video here. So, but uh, it's going to be up, let's see, today's Tuesday. I, I, I didn't go into work on Monday. I wasn't feeling very good and uh, definitely feeling a lot better today. So I'm getting this all wrapped up. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a pretty good success. Uh, like I said, uh, taking a G4 cube apart was pretty scary. Uh, I mean, I work on computers, but this, but you know, once you get it apart, then, and you put, it, it goes back together really easy. It definitely goes back together faster than it does come apart. Uh, cause like I said, this thing has not been apart. And I don't think the motherboard's ever been out of it. So it was a little job getting it out, but got it right back in real quick. Uh, and like I said, it went back together really fast. So, okay guys, so anyway, I'm gonna work on editing this video a little bit more, get it uploaded. And uh, just to remind everybody that the, um, the microphone giveaway is still on. We are at 37 subscribers. Uh, haven't picked up any for a couple of days, so you guys still got plenty of time to get in. And uh, so like this video, or not like it, whatever you want to do, uh, but comment. You need to put your comment in on the video, so that way when we do the YouTube randomizer, uh, we will uh, do, um, you know, we'll, we'll screen capture that and you, that URL, and then whoever's made a comment on that, uh, we'll do the drawing that way. Because uh, I was going to do it a different way, but um, it's going to be much easier this way. So anyway, um, yeah, so please subscribe. Um, and, uh, I got a, uh, let's see what else. Well, I'll probably do another follow-up video on this G4 real soon of, of, as uh, far as the software and stuff and trying to get that button, uh, proximity button thing, uh, situation resolved. All right. So you guys have a great, uh, rest of your week. And this is Dave from Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.